Hello, I'm Monica. I'm the owner of Face for Makeup and Skin. This is Face for Teeth Information. I want to have a channel where I can share with people things they can do at home to have better skin because I know it's really frustrating. I'm in New York. I know a lot of people can't come to New York for facials. And But anyway, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about my background so this way you will trust me a little more. I'm going to give you makeup tips too, not in this episode, but I'll do makeup tips, skincare tips, things you can do at home, and the facials that I do. So if you are in New York ever, you can come to me, get a facial. I worked with Dr. McGuffey. That was one of my first jobs. I worked with her really great with the nurses there, learned and was reconfirmed that medication is not the answer. After her, I um, went to California. I wanted to, actually I worked in the stock market for a while. I worked in, with a securities firm because I wanted to see what the other side of the world was like, you know what, I've been in the beauty industry for a while, you know, for years. And I wanted to pursue my dream of doing special effects makeup. But before I went, I was like, let's just see what the other side of the world is like, see what the business world. So I worked with the securities firm. I worked with the, the president, the owners, of the company down on Wall Street. Did that for maybe two years. I don't even know how long, a year or two. Actually, one of the owners is now um, a big actor, Frank Grillo. I'm sure I could say his name. I mean, he's famous, but Frank Grillo, he was the owner of the securities firm and we worked side by side. I worked down on Wall Street and I realized I don't want to work on Wall Street. I like what I do. I like the beauty industry. So I took off. I went to California, went to Hollywood and learned special effects makeup. I learned how to do makeup for television, for a film. I learned everything you need to know about makeup. It was great. I lived in Studio City. Do I didn't know anybody in California when I moved out there. I think I was like 21, 20. I don't even remember how old I was. It's horrible. I loved what I learned. I loved it. I got to sculpt. I got to paint. I, I'm an artist, so I do paint and I didn't never sculpt it, but I painted, I was, you know, I always was drawing. So when I moved uh, to California, when I went to the school, I learned how to sculpt and it was amazing. I, I didn't learn, the, I just had to do it. I think they just expected you would know how to sculpt. So when he gave me my first project, I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do that. Went home, had to sculpt something and I loved it. I was like, oh my God, this is like just taking what my ideas and making it into like a three-dimensional, you know, dream, whatever I thought of. So it was great schooling. So I went to school for that. I lived in California for a little bit, moved back to New York. I didn't love California, nothing against LA. LA is great, but I'm East Coast. I was born in Queens, lived in New York. I live in Rockland County, but Nyack around there. I, I'm more of an East Coast person. I always went to visit California. I, I love that, but I didn't want to live there. I came back, did a lot of different jobs with special effects and realized, I, like I told you in another episode, I, I won't do um, Botox or any injectables because I'm so allergic to everything. I was so allergic to all the things that you need to use for special effects makeup. So there's a lot of chemicals that you have to use when you do special effects, make when you do special effects makeup. So I had to stop. I had to go back to my other loves. I had to go back to beauty and uh, skincare. I reinvented my career again and decided that I was going to do beauty makeup and be really good at it. So I always did brides. No matter what I did, my clients would always find me and want me to do a wedding if they were going to a wedding or if they were getting married. So that part of my business sustained throughout from the very beginning that even till today but I actually decided that I was going to go full force into my career of working with celebrities I wanted to do makeup for television because that was the part of the special effects makeup that I wanted so I was already on the way of doing that I was working on a lot of independent films I made some connections so I diverted my connections so I could just do beauty makeup so I started doing more beauty makeup. I worked with Notorious B.I.G. I worked with Lil' Kim. I worked with Dave Matthews Band. A lot of different celebrities throughout the years. And it was great. I loved it. But then I realized I could make the same amount of money. It was all about the money and the time. When you work on television or in the industry, you usually work like 20 hour days, like 15 hour days, 20 hour days, no matter what. If I worked in an infomercial, it would be a 12 hour day. If I worked on a regular commercial, 
it would be a 10 to 12 hour. Again, when you get home, it's really late. So it was just a lot of hours, a lot of hours. So I liked it, but I needed a break. And I always did my wedding. So the wedding people, whoever wanted to get their makeup done for a wedding, I constantly had that business on the side. So my side hustle was doing makeup for weddings. And my real job was doing makeup for celebrities and working on television and movies. But I realized I can make pretty good money doing weddings. I mean, it's comparable to the amount of money I was making doing uh, television, but working less hours. I decided then I'm gonna switch over and I'm just gonna start doing more weddings. I still had producers calling me, wanting me to do, so I picked and chose the jobs that I wanted. I started doing that and continued doing building more of my clientele for weddings, which was very easy because it was already there. But I worked in, I forgot a whole part of my life, which I forgot to tell you this part. While I was working on like Little Kim and videos like that, I had my own line of products that I developed. So this is a little backward ended story. I'm just gonna tell you, hopefully you'll understand it. When I was in California and I was doing my special effects makeup, when I came home and started doing special effects makeup here in New York, I had a job to do, it was an independent film, so I needed more blood, fake blood. And I had to, I looked at the back of the, the jar because I uh, the blood I got was from California. When I came home, when I was here and I got a job for an independent film, I needed more blood, looked at the back of the bottle and it was in a town right near where I lived. So I was like, oh wow, I can go get more blood, great. So went to this place, asked them about, you know, can I get the blood that you sell? And then I'm like, yeah. And then they started asking me a lot of questions like, oh, where did you hear about us? Like, how did you get this blood anyway? And I said, oh, I went to school in California. I told them the name of the school, these uh, Institute, of Studio Make Institute of Studio Makeup. It was right in Hollywood on um, Ventura, no, Cahuenga Boulevard. I went to school there. They knew right away what it was. And they said, oh, that's great. They started asking me more questions. They said, why don't you come in one day next week? We could use somebody like you to test our products, try new products, and just work alongside us. That was, and work on ads that they had. I was like, great, I'll come in. So I came in, sat with them, met with them, started working with them. So that was one of the jobs that I kept on the side that I would do all the time, do my weddings, work on television. Then I told the owner of the studio, it was Mayron, Mayron Makeup, really great makeup, really great company. I told him that I was very upset with the lip colors that were out there, even with MAC, like every lip color that I tried. I'm um, Spanish and German, so my lips are a little darker. I don't have lip color and I just have lip gloss. My lips are a little darker. And a lot of the girls that I worked with on videos had darker lips. And the colors that I would try on them would change automatically. They would either turn more orange, turn more pink. I told him that I had to mix so many different colors in order to get the right, the color that I envisioned, that I wanted on them. And he said, well, you know, you already know a lot of the products because I was helping him with some of the product development. And he said, why don't you just make your own? Yeah, why not? Why don't I just start a company? He said, yeah, you could do it. You already know how to mix. You already have the, the knowledge colors like I paint. He goes, it's the same thing. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, just try it out. I'm like, all right. So I went in the lab I, on my time not his time. If he was paying me to work for him, I did the work that he needed. And then afterwards, I sat in the lab, started mixing some things. He was so generous, really great company, really great guy. He told me, yes, I could make all these things. So I would make little tiny cups, little tiny containers of the products. And I learned, actually I learned in California too. I worked with this company, Rachel Perry, who I love. Um, she's no longer with us, but I loved her, her whole line. And when I was in California, that was the job I had in order to support me when I was going to school. I learned how to use like the, the scale. I learned a lot from her, how to custom make foundations. So someone come in and I would go from making little drops like on a piece of wax paper, custom blending their foundation and then turning those drops. There was like a little mathematical equation to turn it into a 3.5 gram bottle. So I learned how to do certain things like that, which was just a random thing to learn. And now I'm using, it's like, you have to learn math, you know, don't, you have to, it's gonna be part of your everyday life. Turns out, yes, it was, it was part of my life. I had to learn how to change that formula of changing three drops of makeup 
into 3.5 grams into a bottle. So it was very useful. I had to do that with the lip colors. So if I was making little tiny samples, then I wanted to make a couple more samples. I had to use somewhat, I had to create my own formula and make a, a large enough sample. So I did that and I would bring it to the set and use it on myself and use it on the set, whoever's makeup. I wasn't doing it on, Lil, on Biggie or Puffy. I was doing it on Lil' Kim and the dancers, all the dancers that would show up, I did all of them too. So I used it on them and they loved it. So they loved it. I loved it. I gave it to so many people to try. They loved it. I got written up in like every magazine back in the day, every a lot of magazines, written up every magazine. I um, got a lot of press for it. I decided to start my own company. So I had facewear, facewear makeup, and I sold in Nordstrom's. I sold in Bloomingdale's. I sold in boutiques all across the country and even internationally. I had my own line of products and I did that for a while. I had that for years. So I went from going to school for a special effects makeup, came home, um, found this place that did special effects makeup, worked with them for a little bit, couldn't really go full fledged into special effects makeup. I did a couple of jobs, had to stop because I'm too sensitive. I couldn't work in that with all the chemicals. Then I started my own product line and continued working in the industry. Then I started doing more weddings, even within, like that was my side gig when I was doing all my other things. I had too many side gigs actually, but my product line took off. I did that for a couple of years. I had to travel back to California because I was in all the uh, Bloomingdale's in California, the Nordstrom's. So I had to travel back and forth. So it, was a, it was a great life. I mean, it was a lot of work. And then I started doing more uh, makeup for, even while I was doing that, my office that I had in Nyack, where I um, put together all my stuff to sell to Nordstrom's and Bloomingdale's and everywhere else, I set up a little studio. So inside my office that I had, I had a studio where I could do makeup and I had a studio where I could do facials. So I always stay true to my, to my beginnings. I did facials, um, did some skincare work, and did my makeup. Years after that, I opened up my own studio. So I had several studios, um, but the studio that I have now, I do makeup and skincare. And when I first started, I did makeup and I did skincare. So it's been full circle. I've done a little bit of everything. I just want you to know that I've had a little bit of everything. I've been in this industry for so long. I've done a little bit of everything. I just want to let you know that I will share with you the things that I've learned. I've done a lot. I've learned a lot and I will share with you what I've learned and how to transfer it to you so you can make better decisions maybe when you're shopping and I'll show you little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. I learned a lot. I've worked a lot and I have have a lot of on the job experience and I have a lot of job personal experience and with my clients, all different aspects of the business. I just want you to know, this is my background. So if you can trust me or not based on just my, my resume, then you can trust me. But like I always say, do your own research, prove me wrong if I'm telling you something, I'm glad to hear it. And that's it. I hope I didn't go off on a huge tangent. I always talk way too much, but that's my life. That's what I've done over the years. So you can take it or leave it. Trust me. Know that I kind of know what I'm talking about. I've been around the block doing a little bit of everything. So make sure you like, thumbs up <laughs> for the episode, make some comments and subscribe and tell me what else you would want to know. And I will see you at the next episode. Bye.